Hello and welcome to another IGK tutorial and this one is basically how to make a little editor, a little basic editor so you can start designing your games. Now I know one comes with um, IGK, you've got the basic uh, tool that's, that's with it but a lot of people do like to make their own editors within a game. Uh, I, I do, I, I never use the one that's that's built in with D, uh, DB, AGK. Um, I just, I, I don't know, I don't know what it is, I'm just not too keen on built-in editors, uh, I like to do my own. But anyway, let's just quickly run this, hopefully this will work better than the last one did, because it's not full screen. Right, you can see, it's very simple, all I've got is just a little screen, I don't know whether you can see the uh, grid effect I've created. Um, and you can just basically paste down some tiles. The oh, not very good. You can delete. There we go. Not exactly artistically amazing. And then you can save. Uh, we can clear that, and we can load. And that's about it. That's pretty much all you need to know. Um, it's the start anyway. Like I say, you can move on from this and pretty much just work out how to get levels designed. It only works on one screen at the moment. It's not scrolling or anything like that. You know, so yeah. Anyway, I think you get the picture. Right. I'll get out of that. Right, how do you do it? Right, I'm just making a virtual resolution 640x480. I've matched it in the setup, so it just looks the same. Um, else you get the borders, it was squashed or looking strange. Um, I'm setting the VSync. Uh, I'm making a type. If you've not used types, I'll sort of try and explain them. Um, basically, instead of using just a standard array or a multi-dimensional array as I'm using here you can actually use a type which I'm adding in here you can see I'm dimensionalizing this array it's a multi-dimensional array and I'm adding a type so basically I've got sprite ID and properties so if I wanted to alter something to do with this you'd simply be able to put dot sprite ID and that would get um, your sprite ID out of the type and uh, similarly you could change that to properties and that will get the properties out but obviously not there because I'm just setting it up um, I'm using a multi-dimensional array here because I'm using the actual positions in the array to get the positions on screen so if I run it again uh, you can see these numbers here telling me which grid square I'm on so that's zero, zero, that's zero, one, zero, two, blah, 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 blah. And I'll go up there. That's 15, zero, 19, zero. So it sort of works out the grid. It knows exactly where you are from that array position. And that's mighty useful, mighty useful. Saves you a lot of messing about. And it's just the best way to do it, in my opinion. Or as far as I know, of course. There may be other ways. There's plenty of ways to do editors. Um, Grid, that's the size of each tile. Um, 640 divided by 32 is 20. Um, and I'm using 19 because arrays always start from 0. So 0 to 19 is actually 20. Um, and the same for that, that's 15. 480 divided by 32 is 15. So that's 14, including the 0. So that just explains that little bit. I'm sure a lot of you will know this already, of course. Um, and then we go to init, or go sub init, but we're going to it really. Okay, now next init here, um, I'm resetting account, which doesn't really need resetting at this particular point, but it will do every time it's rerun. So that's why I put that at the start. Goes into a nice little double do loop, an XY loop, um, so it'll get the position in the grid. It checks if a sprite exists delete it if it does because we don't want one at this point it's knitting them uh, it increases the count and it creates a sprite here um, yep and it sets the sprite size, sets the sprite position sets the sprite colour 
um, and then it sets the ID here which is the sprite number 10,000 plus count the reason I'm using 10,000 plus count is that is because the automatic ID start at 10,000 plus count and I was using them at one point this editor has gone through three different developments and I've just I've finally got to this that I think yeah this is about right uh, it could be better I could tidy up a bit more but I'll be taking forever if I do that so I've um, I've left it at that you can use pretty much any number you want but you know if you want to make sure it works use 10,000 plus count it gives you room to put stuff in before it um, it's useful to have a bit of a buffer and I'm not using any auto generated sprites anywhere else so it's not going to interfere with those um, yep this basically here is just getting the um, sprite set up for the first um, grid if I run it it would be easier to say this this overlay here this is what it's doing at this point so it's making all these sprites positioning them using the grid x times grid which is 32 so 0 times 32 is going to be 0 for the first one 0 0 and so on for all the rest uh, I'm setting the sprite ID and the properties up uh, and then if it hasn't already made it it gets the overlay image which is basically all these tiles here and set to a transparency in the colour there of 80 so it's sort of see through and you know it looks quite nice it reminds me a bit of the first person shooter creator editor look actually it's probably a very similar way they did it except with graphics um, yeah so this basically here gets a picture of the screen if the sprite doesn't exist so and you have to use render before you use get image if you don't use render it won't get anything if you just use sync it'll just get a blank screen um, that's just the way it works look the instructions up if you look up the instructions to get image it tells you all how to use it and it basically tells you to use render before it and clear screen after it well I'm not 100% certain you really need to use clear screen um, at this particular point because it's just a one-off little grab and it'll clear the screen anyway so that's probably not needed but I'll put it in anyway um, yeah it creates one sprite number one with image one just to keep it nice and simple and easy to remember sets the size the same sprite as the screen um, and then it deletes those sprites up here that it's made for the backdrop and that's then goes back up here from go submit returns back here and goes to the main do loop and the do loops basically just goes to control and syncs and there's control uh, MX and MY this is where it finds out the actual cursor position um, you see I'm using floor which basically gives you the floor so if you add um, 9 9.2 or it would make it 9 or you know 8.7 would make it 8 it always puts it to the bottom the lowest value um, of any sort of float anything that's not an integer um, and that will basically grid your, your title so wherever your position is you know, 32 by 32 you'll divide it by grid which is 32 and it'll floor it or 60, you know, so on and so forth I'm sure you can understand that and I'm just printing it so you can make sure it's right um, this here is just checking the, the actual coordinates of the screen so basically MX and MY have got to be greater than 0 for it to do this for it to say hit equals this and print equals this um, that is just so that if you're going off if you go off the screen so if I run it again if you go off the screen while you're painting these if you haven't got that little bit of code in it'll crash it'll try and assign a sprite to zero or whatever to you know a part of the array that it doesn't like um, so that's no good so that's why I've put this if MX is greater or equal to zero and MX is greater or equal to zero there or MY I should say um, that will stop it crashing I mean if I just take that out a second and run it it should crash as soon as I drag my screen up yep out of bounds that's just to show you why I'm doing that it's just one of the ways of limiting it there's other ways in fact that's a little loop let's just tidy that up um, right just printing the stuff printing the sprite cam so you can tell that it's not um, making millions of sprites all the time so I'm clicking that's the sprite count here the manic sprite count well I'm going down although it's still printing it because I haven't put uh, greater than 
or less than um, the edges it's not creating it because it's 25 29 still 29 of them outside then it counts up there and it deletes them as you delete them so that's all working nicely you can see there um, right this is the part what actually checks if you're clicking so if you're left clicking point to get point to state one and MX is greater than or equal to zero and less than 20 which is the edge and the same for this which is the top and the bottom um, that's just to stop you creating sprites anywhere outside of the array then it basically if the sprite exists or rather if it doesn't exist because it's a zero there it creates a sprite sets it in the right position sets it to the right size and puts it in the right position which is MX times grid and obviously MX is found out slightly up above um, and then it basically if it does exist so obviously if you, if you when you first click nothing's going to exist so it'll just plunk it down but second time if it exists it sets the sprite color to that which is green because if you oh hold on mm -hmm. Let me just run it. Sorry, I'm forgetting. It's been a while since I did this bit. Um, so after that, yeah. All oh right. No, sorry, sorry. God, it sets it to green regardless, because obviously it always exists after this bit. Um, but that's that just basically checks again. If I don't have this in here, um, you'll find it'll crash, basically, because you know it doesn't it doesn't exist there. But it does exist and it's got to change the colour. Um, well, perhaps not. Perhaps not in this bit. But it is needed, believe me. Believe me. Right. Um, I think I've explained that. Well, you can see, you can look at the code. Um, I'm setting the properties to equal 1, that means it exists. If it's 0, it doesn't exist, it's deleted. So that basically is just the, the code to position your block down. And then again, I'm using get raw mouse right state, it's a bit of a mouthful, because um, it's the only way I know to check the right mouse button. Uh, and again, it checks the coordinates, same as above. And if the sprite exists, simply delete it and set the properties to zero. Simple enough. And that will um, clear it off the screen nicely for you. These ones here are just the simple ones if you press space it'll save if you press L it'll load and if you press uh, I think it's C uh, it'll clear it which is a neat same difference clears the screen um, reuse code to do the same thing it's always a good thing I've showed you a neat right um, save so I don't know what well obviously I don't know whether you've done any save code or not but basically this is how I always do it you open the file to write. I always use one. I've never had to use a different number than one because I'm only ever opening one file at a time, and it's always file one. I'm not quite certain if there's any advantage uh, to using more, more than one file there. Possibly, possibly, um, but you'd be getting a bit more complicated there, I think. Uh, and I've just called it map dot that because that's where I've saved it as in the save part, or rather, this is the save part. This is what I'm going to save it as. It automatically makes that. Um, Again, it's going through the same loop as when it's built for the grid, and it, it just writes the this particular part to the file. So it goes and it puts map x comma y sprite id and properties for each one of the uh, positions on the grid, and then after that, you close the file and save. There we go, I've just got a little sleep so you can actually see map save. It still flashes up quite quickly and you hardly see it, but you know, that's just for looks really. Uh, and load is pretty much the same process. Instead of opening to write, you open to read. Make sure you've got the right file name. Uh, another loop to do the same. Uh, the only difference here is obviously you've got to build up the screen according to how it reads the file in. So basically, you know, you're the, the idea if the sprite exists 
and it'll delete it. This is just a simple mag show. If there's any sprites hanging about, it deletes them. Uh, and then this sets the sprite ID to the first value in the string, which was saved there. And then that reads um, the properties, which again was set there. Make sure you do it in the right order, that's important. Uh, she'll be getting them completely mixed up and wondering why it isn't working. Um, now, that's again, it's checking if the properties are greater than zero. Um, so if it is, if the properties are zero and it doesn't exist, it'll ignore it and just carry on. If it does, it'll make a sprite. If it's one, which it can only ever be one at the moment, but obviously you can use uh, whatever number you want to indicate a, a different image for a platform or whatever. Um, and then it'll read it and it'll create the sprite with the sprite ID it's been set to and it'll set the sprite size again to the right size and position it to go into the grid um, and then this little bit here is checking if it equals specifically one it sets it to green because it doesn't know what colour if you didn't do that and when you reload it in um, let's just quickly run it it should just reload it up as white I would imagine so that's my old one, it's there white instead of green. So that's the, all that's doing there. And then after the loop you close the file. It's important to open and close the file outside of the loop. Generally. But obviously in this case, yes, you definitely need to open to read and close file outside of the loop. Do everything inside the loop and then close it. Uh, and there you go, and then it says map loaded. It waits a bit again. And it's done. And that's pretty much it. Um, I'll slowly scroll through the code for you. It's fairly simple. You don't need any media at the moment. I didn't want to include media. I just wanted to do raw coding. And yeah, I think that's quite a, quite a good little nifty program. I've done millions of editors. Um, like I say, I practically do them for every game I do. It does tend to slow you down and it can annoy you and you end up making an editor and not doing a game, or not finishing a game. Um, my advice would be try to work on sort of an editor that you can use general purpose for a few games and it might be a bit more useful for you. Unless of course you're doing a, a batty clown or something and you want people to be able to design their own levels, which I worked on at one point but I was getting some strange bugs with the collision for some reason. So I sort of gave that neck at the time. I had a hard drive crash since, so I'm not certain if I've got it anymore. But yep, that's a little basic sprite editor. For those of you who don't know how to make one, and have always fancied trying it, or perhaps just, you know, new to IGK, uh, and want to do this sort of thing, it'll give, it gives you a starting point. Obviously, I'm just changing the sprite colour, but you can change the image, you can change properties to any number you want to match the image that you want um, so you can advance it from there. I may do another tutorial advancing it further with actual graphics and things like that but for now um, I hope you uh, found it useful uh, please remember to rate and subscribe if possible and until next time I'll uh, catch you later just a little addendum as normal um, I thought I'd just explain why I'm using right string because um, you can't just you know, write a value, this is a string. Basically, the only reason I've used string is so that if you look up your save file and you want to check it out, you can just open it up in Notepad and you'll see all the numbers that should be there. It's easy to read, um, because actually this isn't a string, obviously. And I'm having to convert it to a string here. But if you don't want your file to be readable, you can get rid of converting it from a string and just use um, write file instead and then you won't be able to particularly read it in notepad it'll just be all gobbledygook but obviously for when you're looking at it yourself and you want to make sure your array is being saved correctly it's best to use write string then you can just look at your things you can change it later if you want um, but I thought I'd just explain why I've used write string because I did notice when I was just replaying it through to test it recorded okay I didn't mention that and some people might be thinking what's this write string what's str do um, str basically converts a, a normal file a normal integer or float um, to a string so that's it until next time I'll catch you later